All right. Go. Give it a second, just in case. What's up? Hi. Hello. It's it's me, DM Drew with with me. Joel. Joel. Hello. It's Milo Joel. <laughs> it's... Um. Yeah, we're here to share with you one how we organize the game how joel organizes the game for drew yes i don't like do it but no. i give him the tools to do it yeah he goes hey here's this cool tool all you have to do is use it and then um three months later i'll ask him how it works and then that's great how we use our character sheets and how it links with what i gave to drew mm -hmm. and how we cleaned it up for our patreons so um, this will be a sneak peek into kind of how things work on our end. And if you are a member of our Patreon Cool Trainer tier, um, you can have this and do whatever you want with it. So, yeah. Um, this could be a little teaser and also an instructional video. Yes. If you are a member of the Patreon and you run a D&D game and you want to use this. Yes. Enjoy. Um, the way it's cropped is a little funky, so you can't uh -huh. see like all the internet stuff. Um, but if you're familiar with Google Sheets, this is how this is run. And when I say like tabs, there's tabs on the bottom. Oh yeah, we can flipping. we can resize it. I think that'll do. So this it's perfect. This is the landing screen. Should you forget or not want to watch this video, I put brief blurbs on what each tab does. This is the DM side. So if you're running a game, this is. All the tools that we've made for your use. Um, and then it's we great. will go over the player sheets uh, in a bit. We're so, back. Uh, we're going to go through the DM side, and then we'll go through the player sheet stuff. Perfect. So the DM side of things um, is broken up into a, a couple main like data point entries as a DM. You're building Pokemon, monsters, stuff for your players, NPCs, all that stuff. So first and easiest, we have just your Pokedex. Um, it does come blank currently. Um, you know, things with like Pokemon 5e and what have you. We don't mm -hmm. want anything that could get it all deleted. Yes. So this is where it's got uh, your stock Pokemon uh, all the way through uh, Legends. Number 905. Um, Look at that. And you go through and you fill it out, like what type they are, what their abilities is, like what that ability does all that stuff and you can go all the way down towards what moves they have um all their stats their size um mm -hmm. etc all right so yeah you got your pokedex you can do your your stats all your moves your abilities what have you you can do this for stock pokemon all the way down um there are links here that take you to the favorite pokemon resource of Serebii if you just need some inspiration or ideas mm -hmm. Um, that is you, literally how I do it. And you can add as many rows to this as you want. If you want to make like a thousand more Pokemon, just make them up or do like lines for your own variants and things. You can insert lines, you can add more rows, and nothing in that realm will affect anything else. So go crazy, do what you want, um, build whatever you want to build, and where it's it's future proof. It's beautiful. What it is. Um, on the next tab is player Pokemon. Exact same thing, except this is just Pokemon that your players have. So you can copy over, say, a Bulbasaur, like we did in this case, bring it over. You can put whatever name, or you need to put whatever name. Um, so let's say character one caught a Bulbasaur and they named it Bagels. You put Bagels in there, and then you put who it belongs to. Um, these two things are important as far as the player sheets, and we'll get to that later. Yes, this is, this is Susan Bones' yes. Bulbasaur named Bagels. Yes. Um, the most important character in the Harry Potter canon. Yes. And you, you just copy that over from your Pokedex. You can make any tweaks you want to do um, for the player. Same stuff. It's got the stats and all that. And then if you would like to, you can add images. Um, like there's a little Bulbasaur uh, picture in a headshot, and we'll see that later. Um, that is entirely up to you. You don't have to do it. But what it allows you to do is, let's say, hypothetically, we have Party Hat Bulbasaur here, right? 
and Susan Bones is doing an amazing job, and you're working with your DM, and your Ivysaur is going to be electric type or whatever weird idea you have, and you take an Ivysaur into Photoshop or whatever, and you edit it and make it look cool yeah. to what you imagine. When Bagels evolves, you can put that art in here, and when the moment happens, you swap the art, and the player sheet will be updated, and they can see in that moment what the new bagels looks like yeah um without having to do anything on there so we have the initiative roller right so this is straightforward (laughs) it's totally fine we definitely didn't just troubleshoot it Um, for a couple minutes this it's super easy it's great um all you do is as a dm when you're like let's roll initiative you say all right susan roll for bagels what did what's your initiative and susan does she's got her dice and her dex mod she tells you 10 uh you roll for bulbasaur whatever let's say you roll an ivysaur right who's got a plus one to his dex mod and he rolls a, a nine plus his one total is 10 right so that's his initiative When you come over, right now they've all rolled a 10, right? For initiative. When you come to the battle control deck, it's going to sort them for you based on speed ties. So because Ivysaur is the higher dex mod, he's going to go before the two Bulbasaurs. So that's that. Now we're into the the meat and potatoes of this all. But you've seen a sneak peek. We're going to sneak past it real quick. NPCs. Boom. This is similar to the Pokedex. You're just going to put in whatever you want. So you got your name, type in who they are. Yeah, this is this is where you'll get your, your Cleffa, the expert, yep. who loves dragon types and rock-solid steel types. Yep. One Cleffa. Um, where they are, um, if the players have met them, uh, how much they pay out if you battle them for money, uh, their disposition, do they even want to battle if you ask, you know, you have their class, they have any allegiances, a basic description... Who's their team, their Pokemon? Um, you don't have to fill this out. If they only have one, they only have one. You can leave the rest blank. Um, any inventory they might have um, and notes for you. Inventory, I'm thinking like if they have an item that a player could get or if you have a murder hobo and there's like items in They're going to strangle pockets. them. Or it, it, could, it could be like... Choke a, them out with an amulet coin. It could be like a villain, you know, that they end yeah. up killing and they search could their be. pockets. You can put that in there. Um, Sometimes so, you, you end up with a 12-year-old that has a gun. That's it. So uh, let's let's have Drew come up with a name. Uh, Elliot. All right, type it in. You're going to you're gonna like this one, I guarantee it. Where's, where is Elliot? Uh... Hayward City. Perfect. Um, and then, what? Who's his Pokemon? Uh, what? he has a Dunsparce. Okay. Uh, do me a favor and just give him a Bulbasaur. I was just thinking about that. Because All right. He has a Bulbasaur yeah. named Dunsparce. And that's that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, we he's can, busy. his payout's like twenty bucks. Yeah. Disposition. He's uh, uh no. And <laughs> <laughs> battle. <laughs> yes. Me. <Meh. laughs> Class. Uh, magician. magician, yep. Allegiances, magic. Uh, the magic society of Hayward. Okay, that's good enough. Yep. So then, Look let's say you're on the battle control deck, right? This is what it is. Uh, you have uh, all the initiatives. You have the weather as a DM. You can, as a note for yourself, like, hey, you can. We're in a sandstorm. Whoa! Um, and make sure you're tracking all that. Um, enemy list is for you as a DM. So let's say you're, you're running a Bulbasaur. You got a Bulbasaur. It's going to track, uh, you know, you have your AC and your HP. Um, these up here are collapsible. So we have this first one is if you are bad at math. This is my favorite part of this whole thing. If you uh, want to track everything and don't know how to do quick maths, you can do that. So let's say Bagels runs in and hits Bulbasaur for four damage. Um, now you know total is four damage. So then you put in current amount of damage taken is four. Okay. And it's going to remove that from the HP bar. Look at that. Now let's say he takes a new hit for two. So now you know your total, your current damage is six. So you put that in. And now he's down to three. And so you just delete that one. So anytime they take a hit, you add it in, and then you know what their new total damage is. It's so good. Um, it's so simple. When you're at nine HP, it seems a little silly. But if Bulbasaur had like 312 HP and someone does 37 damage and you're like, uh, I'm not really sure what that yeah. is, you can use this to your advantage. I'm pretty solid into like the mid-30s. 
And then after that, so, it's a disaster. So um, that goes down, and then when they zero and then out, it does, it does uh, change colors, you get lower. And then let's say you do knock out Bulbasaur, you could tick this box for KO, and it'll kind of strike them out from initiative, and you can keep going down the line and not worry about it. The most useful spreadsheet I've ever seen. Um, it's amazing. So that's just if you want to use this HP bar and or you're bad at math. Um, otherwise, you can hide it. The second one is all of their modifiers. So if you know everything you're doing and you have notes on the side and you just need at a quick glance what their modifiers are, right here. Um, third one is all their moves and everything they do. So if you have, this is pulling from your Pokedex. So these are all the moves that the Bulbasaur knows. Um, you can know that. Um, and, and run your entire combat from here. And then the last one is just a refresher on how to use it. Um, so let's say you needed all three. You can 100% run with everything open. And mm -hmm. you can just run down and have as many enemies as you want and uh, go crazy and track that. Yep, and we just have it cropped weird on here. It actually fits very nicely on a pretty standard monitor. Yeah, we're zoomed in a bit. We're just um, so you guys can see it. Down here, you have your player teams. Um, this will show everything that all of your players have. So let's take Milo, for example. Like, I've got a whole squad, right? I've got like 50. Don't, no, 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 don't, don't type anything. Because um, this is all automatic. <laughs> um, this is going to pull from your player Pokemon and sort them based on who the owner is. Um, so let's take me, for example. I've got like 15 Pokemon on my team. It would list all 15 right here. But for Drew as a DM, it's going to highlight in green the three to six I have with me in this combat. The most so, useful information. Even if I only for have, him. if Susan only has bagels in combat right now, but she has these three in reserve she could send out, as a DM, Drew's aware that they could show up. So that's the point of this. Um, and then up here, as we kind of alluded to, if you're battling a trainer... Um, you can say, hey, where are you right now? Hey, we're in Hayward City, which pulls up because Drew typed it in. Mm -hmm. It is completely future-proof. You can type any number of locations. It'll populate in there. And then it's like, cool, who are you fighting in Hayward City? We have Elliot. So Elliot's going to pull up. It's going to show his payout, uh, everything we put in there, yeah. uh, his inventory, his notes, his team. Um, He's feeling very no today. Yeah. Um, so that's that. You can use this. You cannot use this, but it's just a way for you to sort your NPCs so that if the players decide to go to Alluvia and there's like a hundred people there, um, instead of, you know, as a DM, be like try to find the notes for, yeah. oh, Oh, they actually want to battle Greg? I got to find my notes on Greg. Shoot, dude. You can say, oh, this is where we are, and pull him up, and everything's there. So you can build as much as you want on this, and you're good. Um, this was hidden before, and then Drew and I were testing some stuff on the fly. So mm -hmm. uh, this stays hidden, and you never touch it. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Ignore that completely. Everything we, this, Everything's fine. Weather. Weather is... Uh, for the control deck, but it also shows for your players if they end up using the system. So here are some basic weathers. Um, again, it's future-proof. You can add a bajillion weathers. You can do whatever you want. Um, weather effects is where you type out from a player perspective, less so as a DM, but more so from a player's perspective, why they're impacted if the weather's happening. So the one we have filled out right now, which is just filler, is for sunlight. Grass type moves have further range, deal extra damage. So if you, and we're going to keep it on this, um, if it's sunlight, these are the types that are boosted by it. So in this case, it's fire and grass. And then on this side, we have move types that are inhibited by it. So let's say, for sake of example, water type is nerfed during sun. Um, what other, just for examples, what other type moves does Bulbasaur have? Is they all grass? Uh, they should all grass, be grass. grass. Okay, never mind. Um, we can just do it one at a time. So Put grass as good and then bad. Yeah. Um, so that's gotcha. what this looks like. So we'll go back over here and change it to s intense sun for a bit. And again, any okay. weather you add is going to be added to this drop down. Um, you, these are just fun little images for it. If you add a weather, it's going to come up as an error, but if everything's working, it's just because there's no picture in it. You can add the picture if you'd like. Um, 
last two, we have badges. Um, we have filler in here for now, but you can type in like any cities that they're in or whatever you want to name them, and you can input any image that you want for the badges. And then this is going to pull all your characters. So wherever you, um, on the next tab, where it's going to have your players, it will automatically populate. And then you can check these boxes as they win a badge, and it's going to show on their sheet. Like if, if player one goes to gym four and the victory happens as a DM, you just go boop. And on their sheet, the badge pops in their badge case. Look so at that. That's what that's for. So uh, clean and crispy. Lastly, is for your players, and arguably the most important tab if your players are going to use the system. So if you are a DM and your players are running um, the player sheets that we're going to look at here in a second, you would say, okay, this is character Fred, and this is the player. So let's say that Greg is playing Fred and you need to add the link to their sheet so that it can you can pull from theirs and they can pull from you so um in the url when you make a player sheet it's going to be like docs.google.com slash spreadsheets and then a slash and then a big old string of text it looks like this one right here it's this monster which drew will have to blur out so i apologize um yep it's it's so blurry i can't even see it yeah but uh well, there's a sensor bar on it so you can't see it but it's a big long it's string gonna put of text sage's face after that slash you have to copy that from their sheet and put it onto here um because that's how it knows where to pull data from um because the other thing i forgot to mention is on the control deck it will be able to pull how much hp your player's pokemon have left because they're going to have something similar to this HP bar for tracking. And if they're keeping track, like let's say Bagels has 3 HP, and we can go show you it, come back to here, it'll show on here, hey, they're running low as a player, and you are aware. So if you have a monster that's going to target the weakest, you don't even have to ask, like, hey, how much HP does everyone have? And then everyone gets real quiet. Yeah, <laughs> you can know. You don't even have to ask. You just know. Um, so that's that. That's how... Uh, I have it kind of organized for Drew. Um, we redid this to make it as like nice looking and uh, user friendly as possible before like sharing it with everybody um, because it didn't look this nice originally. So um, a little visual upgrade. So yeah, this is the DM side. So let's jump over to the player side. This is the player side of it. So um, you would go to this link that uh, is in our Patreon and you would get this player sheet and you would go up to file make a copy and then um make your edits thereafter grab the link that i was mentioning in the url um and go from there um and then they can fill this out you know their character's name their name anything else they want to do um and then similarly to and sorry you'll have to censor this one again oh, it's but, gone uh, the players i would as a dm copy the sheet, put their name on it, and then similarly to what we just talked about, they need the little URL code bit from your sheet on theirs. Um, it's going to pull from there. So you need to put the URL in here, and that's how they link together. Um, if you are a player and you like what you're about to see and you want to use it for yourself, we do have an offline version of this that has no linking whatsoever. Um, it's all just user input. Um, so you can totally use this as a player. Um, it just doesn't have any of this linking stuff that you have to worry about. So hopping over, we have the main character sheet. Um, oh. You can put in the art of your character, um, whoever that may be. You can fill all of this information out, you know, race, class, alignment, blah, blah, blah. Um, they also have an HP bar um, similar to the Pokemon. Um, and... Over here is where their actual stats are. So their AC, HP, temp HP. Um, it's worth noting that let's say you have three temp HP, it will turn this into a blue to signify, hey, you're overhealed, and this is your count. Um, and then if you level up or whatever, you can change your max and go from there. And then this is damage taken. Again, as math, let's say you take 12 damage, it's just going to reduce that by that amount, and you can keep track of it. Um, 
these are all your stats. Um, it's going to do the, the modifiers automatically. So if you change this to a 15, it'll change to a plus two. You can change this to an eight and it'll go down to a negative one. Um, this is a bug right now. And this, is why, <laughs> this is why I did eight so you can see it. I don't know why it happens. It's really weird. But once everything's said and done, if you just uh, reformat the number back to this, it'll not go away for some reason. It's because people are watching. Yep. I've done this like a hundred times, and it's just for whatever reason. It's all the more reason for players to avoid negative modifiers at all costs. Yeah, right. Negative 24 hours of wisdom. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. Um, that's alright. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, it, it's been happening, but that's how you typically fix it. Um, you have your other uh stats here and it's going to pull from your modifiers um to know up top to know what they are um, you can go in here and add proficiency or expertise and it'll add that appropriately um so you can kind of track all that down here uh these are free range so this is four extra slots if you want to add thieves tools trappers kit uh whatever random things you have that you need to make a roll for you can add them here and do a modifier or whatever, um, and it'll still um, add to that. So, um, backpack, self-explanatory, item quantity notes, um, your wallet, um, here are the badges we were just discussing, so because we ticked that fourth badge, it's showing up in the badge case. Um, here's a fun bit, this is your current team. So this is of everyone that you have uh, on your team, this is who you actively have with you. You can, Susan only has bagels, so it's the only option, but it will show their HP and what they're currently at, um, which is nice. And then you have some other bits down here. You can type out um, any notes that you want to add for your character. Um, let's jump over current party. We're going to go to bagels real quick. Bagels. Um, this is where I was saying if the uh, if you change the image on that DM sheet, it's going to populate here so you can surprise players with any tweaks or changes or whatever. Like a party On hit. the fly, yep. Um... You got your Bulbasaur, and then uh, the typing, all their moves and their stats and their ability are going to be pulled from the DM sheet, if that's the system you're using. So as a DM, if you make any changes to their moves, give them a new move, change any stats, on your end, it's going to change for your players. They don't have to do anything. Um, if you're rolling HP, you can add it to the sheet, and it will change on here. Um, everything else on, on this sheet that is blank um, the players can type in. So um, that includes the gender. Um, I put some options in here so you can do whatever you'd like and um, do that, type that out. Um, held item is player managed, so they would just type in what it is, what it does. Um, they have an inventory just in case. It might be like a literal horse that's carrying stuff for you. Could be a William. Could be a William. With a hat. Yep. Um, general notes section. And then this is a condensed notes that you need for battle. So if, let's say, uh, Bagels is afraid of water, I don't know, uh, you can put that in here. Do you want to just type it in there for He's hydrophobic. So Look at that. you need to remind yourself that, like, hey, if I'm up against a water type, Bagels isn't himself from a personality perspective, whatever. Um, that's this. So... If, let's say you'd catch a new Pokemon uh, as a trainer. You just go up here, down to the Bagels tab, click the arrow, click Duplicate. It'll make a new sheet. You type in the name of your new Pokemon and change the name of the sheet to the same name, and it will pull everything from the DM sheet. So if you catch a Charmander and you name him Toaster, and you change this to toaster and the tab to toaster, it will pull everything from the DM sheet from a stat perspective on what your person can do. Now, there's nothing, uh, let's, because we have the other sheet, right? The DM has a sheet of all Pokemon, right? Yes. Let's say you're, you're a player and you're like, ooh, I wanna be sneaky and look, like type in Charmander. That's naughty, that's not allowed. It doesn't do anything, you don't even know. You don't get to and now, and for your sins, Bagels is gone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is only pulling from player Pokemon, so they have to, um, and that's why we sort stuff on that column where it says like, hey, who owns this Pokemon and what's their name? 
that's how this works. So players can't be sneaky. They don't get to see behind your screen or know anything that's going on. I'm going to have to rush you guys to name your Pokemon now then. Yeah, I mean, even if you keep it as a, as stock, you can do like Bulbasaur or whatever. Yeah. Or you can be like, if you don't want to name it, fine, but it's Susan's Bulbasaur and that's what you can put the name as and that's what they have to name it on here. And then when we get our cards deal, Milo's Murkrow. Yep. That'd be pretty cool. Um, so that's that. Future proof. Um, then let's d jump back. Current party. So this is going to be the same as what we just looked at, but really condensed so that you can see all your team. So this is going to have all his stats at a glance, his hold item. It's got his HP bar. Um, let's say he's taken three damage from a hit. Um, on your main sheet as a character it's going to show that you're reduced a little bit so if you haven't visited a pokemon center you know at a glance like hey my team's looking kind of low um and you can manage that so uh there's all that and then going back to what we were looking at because it's pulling from the dm sheet we set it as sunlight right so grass types benefit so any move that is grass type is going to be highlighted green to let the players know hey, I get some sort of benefit because of the weather on this move, so let me look at what the weather does and make that change. If we jump back and we say, for sake of example, that uh, sunlight is actually not beneficial for grass and it's actually a bad thing, on the player sheet, it's going to turn red. Be like, hey, my move is negatively impacted by the weather. I need to go back up, read what the description is so that I know... Um, what changes I need to make. Um, this has up to six slots. They're all collapsible. So let's say in your game you can only have three. You can just reduce and only have three. And that's no harm, no foul. Um, and these are all going to populate based on what this... So if I pick bagels again, it's going to populate a second bagels in my slot. So, Hacks. <laughs> duplication how to, glitch. How to dupe your, your um, bagels before so you the first gym. You don't have to do anything on this sheet. It's, it's all managed by your character, um, and that's how that's done. Um, and then it has your notes that we put. So bagels is hydrophobic. He's got the rabies. Remember that. Um, Yikes. Lastly, purely for fun, we have a trophy case. Uh, this is where you put anything extra that's not a badge that you want to put in here um this is all player managed so you can do whatever you want um it would be put like uh, monty's mail ribbons. ribbons perfect or contest ribbons yeah or whatever yeah or, or you go deep sea diving and you found a really big shark tooth and you're like this is cool and you're gonna put in your trip all the things that everyone forgets about um you can put it in here so this is just an no example spoilers. like a ribbon for winning the uh, elite four but you can add in whatever you want and this it's pretty big so uh do whatever you feel like uh this wraps i believe so you can say like the the grand poop of, of all this that won us the war and helps me sleep that's a really important item yeah it'll Backslash. extend so it'll make it kind of bigger and whatever so i don't know um Bitbong. so that's, that's the player side of one. things <laughs> um it's and again the... if you're on the patreon and you're like oh this character sheet's pretty cool and i want to use it but my dm doesn't want to use the other half of it there's an offline version of this where instead of everything on this sheet populating from the dm sheet like as you can see there's all sorts of fun formulas you just type all this in as a player and you can do whatever and it still will work for pulling stuff for current party and all that stuff you just have to manage um your pokemon like this and then you're good so um that is that that is what uh what we use to play the game uh we use basically this but it doesn't look as pretty but we're gonna transition to it now yeah but it it's good. totally fine because this is beautiful and the other one's perfectly functional so. um so if you are a member of our patreon you can get the links on the patreon site to use these for yourself um and distribute to your players if you have any questions hit me up on the cool trainer chat on patreon i'd be happy to answer them um i do want to give a quick shout out to those of you in the discord that helped me put this together 
because I am not a dungeon master, so I did what I think you would need, and from like talking to Drew, like things that helped him do it better. Yeah. And I asked them for questions, suggestions, and advice, and they were super helpful. Um, they were, you know, a lot of the stuff that's in here were things like, hey, could you do this? I'm like, um, actually, yeah, and we put it in. So big shout out to uh, BT Mikey, Samurai Sam. Um, they've been doing a ton for me in there. Um, Austin, Fox, Cam, Grammar Paladin, Scott, Paragraphs, Psychic Love, Rami, Spike, and Moral Support, Schwang. Um, always there to, uh, help us out and, uh, test stuff out, be our monkeys, so to speak, and, uh, get it done. So, big thanks to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you don't even play D&D, but you just wanted to see what we do on our end to run stuff, there you go. Here it is. Now I have somewhere to send everybody when they go, hey, what's the system that you use? It's right here. This one. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to Joel. Yep. Um, and I don't want to jump too far into this because we haven't figured out exactly what it is. <gasps> Blame me. But if you are a patron and you're using these sheets, um... We have plans in the future to keep up with this, add to it, um, add things from games past to it, um, so that if you are a DM and you're like, hey, I really want to add... Um, Gil. Gil. That's, I was trying to think of the name. And Prime example. I, Everybody forgets about Gil. But, no, I'm, I'm thinking like but they don't super about deep Gil. cut. Like, hey, I love the cops campaign, and I really want to add that detective and their Caspian LaMarche. Can I have some information on that? Probably. Maybe. Who's to say? Not us yet. That's a problem for future us. So, uh, that'll be a Patreon thing, so uh, enjoy for those of you that are in it, and if you uh, are interested, check out our links in the description. Pew! That's all I got. Alright. Cool, cool. Well, thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.